Hello, Christian. Yes. You know, I've written a lot of letters to you, and I'm of the belief that you have not wasted them. Because once a man misses God's divine intervention and appearance and does not value the visitation of the Lord, the consequence is always grave. When Herod did not value the appearance of the wise man who was brought to his palace by mercy and who refused to value the appearance and visitation, God denied him the second chance. He was not given the opportunity to hear the birthplace of Messiah again. So I warned you. I've written many letters to you. I'm writing another one to you today. Listen very carefully. Read it as I will write it to you. And may it bless you in Jesus' name. Check your WhatsApp. I'm going to write it and dictate it there. God bless you. Hmm. May we have disciples that have hearing ears. Each time I enter into my closet, the first thing that, that the Lord normally tells me is to arise. And I keep asking him, why that word, arise? He told me, the prodigal son was never able to return to his father until he arose. He told himself, I will arise. I will go back to my father. That was the first word that destroyed and removed every backsliding from his words. Until a man arose, he will become a crippled forever. The first word that came to Jonah for him to become a vessel of revival unto the Nineveh was that word, arise. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, arise, go to Nineveh. Then I kept asking, why arise? Why must I arise? As if it is not enough when God came unto Peter to send him first to the people of the Gentiles, at least to become a vessel of revival to the house of Cornelius. The first thing the Lord told him was to arise, kill, and eat. Then I say, why? To kill and eat, he must first arise. Then the Lord say, yes! Until you arise, your nation will not arise. The nations are crippled. Economies are crippled. M m many, many lives are wasted because the Christian that God trusted with life and glory will not arise. And I say, Lord, why must I arise? He said, the lawlessness in Israel was not stopped until the devourer arose a judge in Israel. Joseph, what are you arising for? The prodigal son arose to go back to the father, but Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish. What am I arising for? To pursue the world or to rescue the world? Oh Lord, every time you ring in my ears, darkness all, all over the world. Darkness in politics, darkness in, in, in the business world. Darkness in our economy, darkness in the world of education, darkness all over in families, darkness, even our toddlers are becoming agents of darkness. And the Lord told me, Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon, upon you. I said, what? Can't the glory arise by itself? He said, no. Until the glory finds a vessel to arise from and which the nation will never witness glory. Then I say, Lord, then the existence of darkness, the continuity of darkness is as a result of lack of light bearers. Until God finds vessels of glory, bearers of glory, bearers of light, then our darkness shall continue. I thought my prayer should be, Lord, remove darkness. God says, stop praying like that. I can't remove darkness. I can only produce vessels of glory that will remove it. Until I find light bearers, then darkness must continue. Until my David is ready with enough light to consume darkness in history, Saul, the backslider, and the essence of frustration must continue. Lord, until Daniel was found in Babylon, the darkness of Babylon was never removed. Until Samuel was restored back to Shiloh with enough light, the corruption of Shiloh never stopped. Father, make me a bearer of your light. Make me a bearer of your glory. John the Baptist was a human being like me. He was a burning and a shining light. I thought light must be a material thing. I never knew that light can be personified. Oh Lord, make me glory personified. Men are looking for glory. When you say grand, grand, not glory. You go to mountain, oh go me You go to churches, oh go me And yet glory never came to them because there are no carriers of glory. What is the pathway to glory? How do I become a vessel unto glory? Jesus taught me a skill. 
He said, it is time for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. And I said, how? Oh. And he answered, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. It abided alone. Until the Son of Man is lifted up on the cross, then I will never ever be able to bring many unto glory. Say, Lord, what are you saying? Say, there's no crown of glory until my head has won the crown of thorns on the cross. No cross, no glory. No cross, no glory. Until blood was shed on the cross, there was no glory for humanity. No blood, no glory. Oh Lord, make me a bearer, a bearer of your glory. Whatever is inside a container is what is used to name that container. If I carry rubbish, I am a rubbish brother. If I carry fornication, there is nothing. If you call me glory brother and a lie, I am a fornication brother. What I carry is my name. Oh Lord, make me, make me, make me a vessel of, of glory. When Esther was properly discipled by Mordecai and Agar, she carried enough glory to knock down the political madness and corruption in the land of Persia and in the spirit of Ammon. Our politics is dying. It's because there are no vessels of glory at Asorok. It's because there are no vessels of glory among the senators. Give me a vessel of glory. Then I will tell you there is a new Nigeria. But Lord, how will I manifest glory without resources? When Jesus wanted to enter into Jerusalem, to cleanse the madness of Jerusalem, he needed an ass and a donkey. That tells me there are needs for oxen for the advancement of glory. Give me oxen that I can glorify you. I am not one of those who are oxen for self-pleasure. Not to display not to counteract, but to show forth your glory. That young prophet, I pitied him. He lacked the oxen necessary for the advancement of the glory he wanted to preach. He was sent to Bethel. He entered Bethel with power, but with no oxen. He entered Bethel with spirituality, with holiness, but with no oxen. Of course, he was able to break the altar, command the hands of the, of the king to dry up, but no oxen. That was what finished him. When he was going back on another way, he got tired. When a man carries anointing without oxen, you get tired and frustrated even with your holiness. Oh Lord, give me a riding oxen to advance this work of glory in my hands. I wish he had a donkey on an ass as an oxen to ride in the revival for glory. He got tired. He said, Lord, see me on La on Titi wo li ona fi kama ge abe ge ona bo li pelu o didi ona la O Lord, every vessel you use, you give them power and authority as their oxen to advance glory. Give me my own oxen, and I will give you your glory. Give me the resources that I need, O oh Lord, and then the glory will be back to you. That was the prayer of Anna. Give me a man child. And I will restore him back to you. Then the madness of Shiloh will be corrected. Dear Christine, I know you have witnessed the revival and the glory on the Mount of Carmel. I know you love that powerful demonstration, calling down of fire. The killing of 800 prophets. But I saw something beyond that. All of this glory came to be. Fire came to be. Prophets of Baal were destroyed because there was a bullock for Elijah. And I asked myself, where did he get that bullock? A man who suffered three years in the wilderness, Raven, Cherish Brook, and Widow were his sponsors. And yet, after three years of wilderness experience, by the time he was coming out, I wanted to ask Elijah, where did you get the bullock? Did you steal it? No. Did you conjure it? No. Did you tie lie on the puppy in order to have the bullock? No. I never see where Elijah was saying, yes! Was he made the Lord in order to get a bullock for ministry. There was nothing like that. There's no need to deceive my generation to get resources for ministry. Two months have been provided miraculously. A bullock for an Elijah, then a glory for the God of Israel. Give me my bullock. Give me my bullock. It is your glory, not my glory. It is your glory, and I promise not to hijack it. I promise not to be a waster of glory, O oh Lord. I promise you, Lord, 
Not to be an hijacker of glory. For that scripture is clear. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I thought I could change scripture and the glory of Joseph. No, that Bible said the glory of who? Of the Lord is only risen on Joseph. Not my glory, but your glory, but to be manifested through me. Oh Lord, I will not be a waster of your glory as Judas did. I will not be a waster of your glory as the apostle did in Matthew chapter 10. Baba God, through Christ, gave them power and authority to cast out devils, to heal all manner of sicknesses. Of course, they went out in Matthew 10. They did miracles. Demons were cast out. Souls were won and they were brought. They, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were come to Jesus with testimony. We cast out devils. Jesus said, don't rejoice. Because demons answer to your casting out. Rejoice that your name were written in the book of life. And I rejoice in that too. Until I got to chapter 17 of Matthew. And I saw the same disciple struggling to cast out epilepsy, epilepsy from an epileptic ball. Then I asked myself, where was the power in chapter 10? They were given power and authority in chapter 10. In chapter 17, ordinary epilepsy disgraced them. Then I have, I'm asking myself, why is corruption of Nigeria disgracing our pastors? Why is the darkness so thick that ministers of the gospel could not overcome it? Something happened in between chapter 10 and chapter 17. There was a loss of glory. There was a loss of power and authority. I will not waste your glory, O oh Lord. Trust me with your glory. I will not hijack it. It will not become my label. It will not be a thing of display or a thing of show off. But to manifest your glory to the world. Father, you trusted Judas with many resources. That man didn't lack oxen. He was given the post of the ministry. He was given power and authority. His name was written in the book of life. He had the best disciple that anybody can have. But by Jesus himself. Yet he wasted glory. At the end of his betrayal, Jesus was even telling him, friend, will you betray the son of man with a kiss? As if to say, at the point of last betrayal, he's still a friend. What mercy? What a mercy? What a glorious mercy shown unto him. But he could not see his mercy. And, and of course, a replacement vessel on the cross was given that mercy. He spent three and a half years with Jesus, yet with no glory. Yet a man with three hours on the cross entered into his own glory. How will I come to discipleship? How will I have precious fathers and disciples? There are many, 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 many people out there being deceived by false prophets. They have no opportunity of what I've listened to. And yet, will I die without showing forth glory? Then I deserve to be in the hottest part of hell. For I have been given treasures. For you have been given treasures. Messages and word of God have come to you which never came to even your generation. Will you eat it in vain? Will God have come to you in vain? Will you become another Joshua? This is my prayer. Oh Lord, I will not be a Joshua. I would rather be a Caleb. Joshua was trusted with many oxen, resources for the advancement of glory. If it is the best, best disciple in the Old Testament, Joshua had one. I've never seen a miraculous, prosperous Power, powerful man of God like Moses in the Old Testament whose rod could part the Red Sea into two. That was the disciple Joshua followed. The man who could enter into thick darkness. The man who disgraced Pharaoh. The man who could heal the madness of Mara. That was the disciple Joshua, Joshua followed. Yet, he could not bring deliverance to the people of Israel. What a waste of glory. What a waste of resources. When he needed the sun to stop Baba gave him opportunity. It had never happened before on the account of Joshua's prayer. Sun stood, moon stood. What else do you want God to do? When he could not finish the battle, God helped him with millions of angels to rain down eight stones. Eight stones were pursuing the enemy. Joshua was looking like this, yet lamps unconquered. What was his problem? I noted something in Caleb. The only land given to him to conquer was Kijat Sefer. And he conquered it. He turned Kijat Sefer to Abram. How? He announced, I have tried my best. But it's like I could not finish this work. I would rather look, lose my axe to gain the land. And then he announced, whoever conquered Kijat Sefer for me and turned it to Abram, to him will my axe be. He was ready to lose his only daughter to conquer land. Then I know men of revival, they are men of sacrifice. 
Yokuwa ye mini o mummy lo fungo go there. Bow down your heads, bow down your heads and pray. Tell the Lord and say, I will not be a waste of glory. I will not be a waste of glory. Whatever you give to me, we turn to glory for my world. Give me money, that money will become your glory in the world. It will become a platform to express your glory. Give me my husband, give me my wife, give me my child, give me resources, send me abroad. It will not become my appellation. It will become a platform for your glory. Pray. I want you to tell the Lord, use me for your glory.